listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is a business task where the girls' team is going to be taking on the boys' team. Now, this task is all about you running a fun fair. First of all, you are going to pull down all of your friends, either in show business, in the world of politics, in the world of business, and you are going to sell tickets to them and get them to the venue. Then you have got to add value. So, for example, you've got to come up with reasons why you can charge an exorbitant amount of money to get people to be on one of the rides. The teams have just 48 hours to choose fairground attractions, get high rolling guests to pay top prices for tickets, then persuade them to cough up even more on the night. Come on, start brainstorming, Rupert. <laughs> The boys are keen to exploit the Hollywood address book of their star candidate, Rupert Everett. The weight falls certainly on yourself and tears. I think you've got those connections. Oh, Rupert, for God's sake. I'm just going through my address book. I don't know anybody. <laughs> this is my address book. <laughs> who's, your, who's been your most famous director, co star? Um, blah, de, blah, de, blah. Well, lots of people. I don't know really where they are even. <laughs> Don't miss the trick about what you can do with the coconut shop. Absolutely. Yeah. Remember, the deal is if you knock a coconut off, you win a prize. Therefore, we now and tomorrow have to come up with magnificent prizes. Julia Roberts. Yes. You chat to her a lot? No, but I can. I'm just thinking about um, the one thing you could bring to the party that could be brilliant. Rupert Everett and your phone, right? And you speak to Julia Roberts for 10 seconds, and we charge a lot of money. And if there's anybody else in her category, it'd be brilliant. Sharon Stone, Julia Roberts, a genuine Hollywood superstar of that ilk. Well, we get up the dodges, but we got all the, all the other ones. But there's a problem. Their star attraction wants to go home. I'm, like, frozen in front of a camera. You're an actor? Yeah, but I need, you need dialogue for being an actor. <laughs> Can I come with you? <laughs> what if I left? and then left everyone my phone number, and then I could do everything on the outside. My problem is I don't really... I have virtual relationships with, you know, people. <laughs> mostly, you know what I mean? Not really, no. Well, I mean, I don't know any of these people particularly well. Yeah. Who you work with? Well, just people, you know, people who you can probably get to. Hmm. I think it's a genius idea, because I can <laughs> do things, anything you want on the outside. I'm, I'm a free person who's just, like, a charitable uh, chap. Because you don't like the camera? I can't stand the camera. I really can't. With all respect, if you want to walk, it's going to cost you 100 grand. I haven't got it. Well, you have to get it. <laughs> You've got to find it. You've got to donate 100 grand. No, Otherwise, it's just, you know, we could all do that. But you're trapped in these four walls now. I mean, Madonna or something. You have to stop buying babies and chip in a bit. <laughs> None of this is my capacity. It's just, it's not my area. I don't know people. I, don't, I can't, uh, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not just an organiser, particularly. And I don't like, um, just living in front of a camera. And, uh, that's it. I'm here. We know how much work there is here over the next two days. Total hands to the pump. Otherwise, we're going to be deeply in the cart. Mm. I think we could cause a lot of grief if you go. Okay. I think if we can stay, it's better. Right. Uh, and if you're staying, I think you've got to really hand yeah. to the pump. And a cigarette. Well, um, please don't smoke in here. Okay. I hate smoking. I think it would be a terrible shame, as we've got five against five, if he were to, to disappear. So while <laughs> Piers is clearly trying to kick him out the door as fast as he can, I'm sort of gently trying to keep him in and, uh, and make him feel part of it and feel that he's got something to contribute. And I think once he gets into it, I'm sure that he will. Six thirty AM and no sign of Rupert. Rupert has done exactly what I thought he'd do, which is he's choked. Like all great thespians. <laughs> <laughs> when presented with a proper day's work, he's buggered off. And uh, I think it's uh, ridiculous, but more importantly, from our point of view, we're from five to four. This task is pretty challenging and was set with five people in mind. And I think we should demand a fifth.
celebrity you brought in. Well, I think prefer, I might... preferably somebody who doesn't answer to the description "big girls blonde." <laughs> who uh, should we get? Tony. Tony's in Brussels on Friday. Is he a celebrity? He probably isn't. He's a prime minister. Not much else. Elected, all day, is elected by the people three uh, times. Right, we've got to find somebody who's available and free for the next three days. Who would be good? Who would be good? Now, I see Mr Campbell is here in place of the last gentleman that was sitting in that position. Perhaps you'd like to run me through what went on. Explanations you gave to Rupert, but he seemed to be shocked at the fact that there were TV cameras around. <laughs> but he's an actor, though. Yeah. He said acting is different to having cameras without a dialogue. What happened? I mean, he went back to the hotel. And he and said he, he couldn't cope. He yeah. did let us down, didn't he? But thank God we got, we got Timbo here. There you are, all set up, thinking everything's like, and then suddenly, bang, one of your team's gone. I mean, that's what happens in business, right? You know, things do go wrong like that. So, very well done, chaps, and uh, you've got a good bloke there. He is a very good bloke. He spent two and a half years in Honest Owl's School of Excellence, and I hope you haven't damaged him. You haven't corrupted him in any way or form, have you? You said it was nice to work with proper professionals at last. <laughs> I'm getting worried about you, Campbell. Monday morning, you are in my office. You're going to have an intensive rehabilitation course. Rehabilitation course. You're never getting back I'm getting worried you're having a rehabilitation course. He's my new PA. You're coming. <laughs>